Good morning, folks. The storm was loud and is still lingering a bit, but the worst missed me last night. Can't say the same along a line from Chicago to Pittsburgh, where early risers are getting a flashing sky this morning. Major wind, flooding, hail, and a few tornadoes dropped as the storm began last night. Sunrise will reveal the damage totals while the same threat moves to the coastal areas tonight, with a similar threat out west due to a lot of heat. If the phrase black hole makes you cringe, you're likely an electric universe proponent, like me. But the investigation of powerful X-ray sources in our galaxy and beyond is unquestionably an important pursuit. Turns out Andromeda has more such objects than our imagination or computer models could have predicted. Nuclear Day on RSOE Alert Map Hope Creek and shut down due to water circulation issues within the system. At Joseph M. Farley, the electric generator malfunctions forced to shut down. In Sweden, come on now, I'm tired of calling out ring halls. It is constantly trouble, never working properly. They just turned it on and within two hours there was a fire, apparently built on an ancient Swedish Indian burial ground. Folks were coming back to quakes at the end, but here the last 24 hours was as sad as the last few days. No major quaking with just minor upticks in the Caribbean. Soho solar wind plot shows three days, and this clarifies that the density spike days ago was created by speedier particles bunching up the slower ones out in front of it. ACE 24-hour data shows maintained speed with density peaks at the end. Those denser waves broke through our shield to be absorbed in the ionosphere. Flaring is still very weak, but at least we're off the baseline now. This growing region of focus for two days is no longer growing. It peaked and has begun to fade, with new spots on the southeastern limb ready to take their place. Magnetics can't be well judged until these turn in further, but I'd like to draw attention to the leading group really flashing at the southern edge as she guides the way. This potentially means that this group could grow into a more dangerous spot. Umbral field has quieted considerably, but is blocking the solar surface in a big way. No matter as our next coronal holes will not be hidden, pulling up the Stonyhurst heliographic we see this southern dark area turning in just ahead of a big boy up north. You can see the dark edge of his cresting even now. Folks, this is June, 13 days so far. Clearly coronal holes were more prevalent at the start. Now let's check the largest quakes in these last 13 days. The six pointers were early with the coronal holes, and since then we've quieted significantly. The coming days will likely provide an end to this seismic drought. Sky watchers know it's a big two weeks upcoming. Too bad you can't really see most of it. Jupiter is in the glare of the sun, visible only with the Lasco C3, but set to conjoin in just one week. Using NASA's JPL orbital diagram for Ceres 1, we reveal Mercury conjoining Venus around the same time. You might catch this one at sunset. We got filaments popping in a bunch of different wavelengths. Top concern is the US weather tonight. Top watches are for the incoming sunspots and coronal holes. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.35 a.m. Eastern time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.